discipline is very important you know and the only thing is when we say discipline you want to do it every day but sometimes you can life doesn't let you do it every day mm-hmm. so when you can't do it don't stress maybe today you pick up you know and beyond busy high achievers all over the world we're here again this is coach Shane Rola we have Vinetta here we're Hello. super excited tonight we have Marisha from California to actually inspire us and actually even share his experience and his learnings and teach us what he has done to actually be successful well awesome. let me let me pull it up what we're going to be talking about here because I know you guys are super excited to know about this one excuse my messy desktop here. We are talking about finishing a full Ironman without doing sprint, Olympic, or 70.3 first. That is amazing. Oh my God. And starting training without Garmin, wetsuit, or cycling shorts. I mean, so let's go back to the screen here. Who here thought, you or like ask a question, I read a book and it says I need to, you know, wait for a year to finish a full Ironman or I need to have this Garmin or I don't have a bike. I don't know how to clip on clip my shoes. So I'm not going to start training or like, I'm not going to start training until I lose some weight or until I start running around the block. Okay. Who here? I need to do a sprint first. Oh yeah. 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 So like a lot, some other athletes also like, for example, um, I need to see, if it's meant to be, but it, that's totally fine because that's actually what I did. I went for a sprint and then I saw, oh, maybe I'm, I can do Olympic and maybe I can do 70.3. And I did a full Ironman within less than a year, all those. But this man here, Mauricio. He is exceptional. That's why it's so interesting because he's not taking the regular, you know, yeah. the regular route. It's he's like, not going the, the steps that everybody usually does. He did a shortcut. So it's, it's very interesting. I love it. I actually, uh, I also asked him, hey, Mauricio, when you did your full marathon, did you do a half marathon? He said no. And actually, during the training for our full Ironman, I asked him, remind me, Mauricio, when we were training for the first full Ironman, you, I know we had you do a double century ride, so a 200-mile ride. I, I'm going to ask you, Mauricio, can you remind me, before I ask you to do that double century ride, did you actually do a century ride before that? And you know what he said? He said, no, coach. It, it just happened. <laughs> it was part of the training. I love it. And it's, it's really, really cool because during the first Ironman that he did, and that was back in uh, 2019, uh, or is it 2019? 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2018. All he did was he signed up for a double century ride and a two mile swim, and then jumped to the <laughs> jump to the Cozumel Ironman. Okay. So right now we are gonna talk about, but I want to see um, if you are one of those who's been dreaming to race a full Ironman. Who, Say who full. Here? Iron Man. Who here is looking to do an Iron Man right now? Who's training for it? Raise your hands. Or did you sign up for a 70.3 or full Iron Man next year? What's your goal next year? And who wants to do a full Iron Man without doing all the distances? Kind of like what Mauricio did. Follow his hey. Who wants to do that? Save, that save money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Save money. And actually, <laughs> and we want to know more because I know a lot of uh, the, uh what we're going to talk about today, actually, is that how he has gone. He, he beat his personal record by one and a half hour in Cozumel Ironman. And that was like a week ago or a couple of weeks ago. And in fact, two weeks prior, he also beat his full marathon. Guess what? He disliked running. And I asked him, do you still like it? No, coach, I still don't like it. But... Without further ado, let us welcome Mauricio from California. How are you doing, Mauricio? Congratulations on your personal record in Cozumel. How's that feeling now that you've achieved your Thank you, Coach. Uh, before anything, uh, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity of 
teaching me and guiding me through this. It's, it's a pleasure and taking the time right now to speak to me. Um, so I'm, I'm doing good. I'm back to, unfortunately, back to normal life, you know, <laughs> go, life. Go back to work and no worries about do I have to train tonight or nothing like that. So just, just back to normal. I, I achieved my goal and we got to, now when I finish, I, I'm like, tell what? my wife, so what's next? What ah, I do now? I'm, I'm done. I don't know <laughs> what to wait. do no more. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do no more with my life. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I felt when I finished a race. What to do now? <laughs> so yeah. before you know, I know you finished a full Ironman, but I want us to uh, I want to walk our athlete through of like how it was back then. And we were talking, you were talking to me on the phone, and basically yes. what you said is that I've been looking at my bike for four years, and it's been there's a lot of dust. I've been wanting to do a try uh, an Ironman, but I have never done it, and I'm sick of it. How yeah, about like you, four years? Tell us more about it. Like, what made you actually commit to a full Ironman? Well, like you were saying, I'm not uh, into the sport. I'm not into running or nothing like that. Uh, back then, in 2004, a co-worker was pushing me to do a, uh, go, let's go, let's go run a, a marathon with me. So, no, no, I don't, I don't like running. Come on. He pushed me, he pushed me until I did a, my first marathon. When I did my first, second, maybe three marathons, I didn't, I didn't train for more than, I didn't run for more than 10 miles when I was trained. I didn't even do 10 miles. I would just go and do the marathon. Just do it. And, and uh, I would cram my first marathon. I will just walk and run until I finish. Mm-hmm. You know, my goal was to finish. And then the time went by and uh, I saw a video of an Ironman, the Kona, Kona Championship. And that caught my attention. So, as I said before, I die. I want to be one of those guys. I want to hear that the world, the words with my name one day. And that's how everything started. Just a dream, just a dream. And so I went and buy a bike. Yeah. I was gonna train by myself. Right. And I didn't do nothing with the bike. I left it right there in the garage, and I just keep looking at it. <laughs> never. never. Never used. I used it a little bit at the beginning, you know, when I met Monica, when I met Carlos, and different yeah. people. Sure. Uh, but I know nothing about the sport. I didn't have no shorts or nothing to train, so I would just go with them for little, little rides. Mm-hmm. And then uh, time went by, and I kept telling my wife about my dream. And one day she said, "You gotta do it this year, or you're not gonna do it." So that's how. Uh, I, we decided to do it, so I started training by myself, but I couldn't swim more than two loops or one loop in the, one the loop. swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, one, one oh. way, and I will be running out of breath. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that I had to breathe this way or do this. Then mm. uh, I saw a posting from Monica, and I saw your name in there. I just saw uh, thanking you for her Ironman and stuff like that. So, and yeah. then I said, oh, she has a coach. <laughs> let me let me let me try to contact her coach and that's when i look for you that's true that's that's, that's when we met so it took you is it four years so you when you bought your bike just like every year you're like i want that dream but never got yes. it done and then one year and and then now you saw another person made it yeah another person made it that's why like oh look i told my wife look at you know she already did it she must have a coach and then we saw your name and, and I read the comments yeah. and I said, Oh, I think that's her coach. Let me try to see if I can cut, contact her. Gotcha. And I did. And I, I remember when we had the first meeting mm-hmm. that I remember you telling me, I got to see if you're the right person. I'm not going to coach you if you're not the right person. So <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you why I was doing it, my plan, my, my, you know, I had to do it once in my yeah. life. Sure. And that's, that's when everything started. Yep. Yeah. Well, at the time, you know, uh, you did not have a Garmin watch, and you did not have a wetsuit, and you could, you could, you said you couldn't even finish a lap. And then when I saw you, with, you know, on the picture, you have, you don't, you don't even have the cycling shorts, the, you know, the the usual cycling short, the jersey. You wear what kind of short? What, what did you have? Is it? Uh, I don't know. Regular Just short, shorts, it. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah casual like going to the mall same short yeah. like, right? I, I was i was uh i was more worried about how i looked than what i needed you know ah! that's, <laughs> yeah. that's your that, was, uh, that was my worry yeah 
Yeah, I got you. So forget about being arrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, forget <laughs> I didn't know no technical about anything. I don't know Garmin. I don't know power meter. In fact, I never got a power meter. You know, I just, the Garmin, my watch is what yeah. tracked me. Yeah. yeah. And then I remember also you were asking, okay, coach, if I really, if that would help me, you know, how do I prioritize? I'm on budget right now. What do I need to get yeah. right now, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I remember talking about yeah. the the equipment, would that help or just <laughs> would it make me faster? not really yeah <laughs> yeah what was i am curious what was about that post that made you actually like oh i need to reach out what uh because uh monica was sharing her video crossing the line and, and okay. oh. saying i i did it and then uh i remember coach said something like congratulations you're an iron man or something like that so it it didn't even say she was the coach. I just kind of figured it out, mm. and that's what. That, well, I was already planning on training by myself, but I wasn't going nowhere. I was just trying to train, and then my wife said, "No, you need to get a coach because you don't know how to swim." <laughs> right? <laughs> Looks <laughs> so like you're, uh, the, your wife is very honest. <laughs> oh yeah, she's she's very honest and she's very demanding of <laughs> what I what I do. Yeah. So yeah, Mauricio, is it hate or dislike Mauricio about running, or is it kind of like Neil? I just, I just, I just, it's not my thing, you know. And then, and when they ask me, "What's your weakest?" All three, all three are my weakest. I, I'm not good. At, I'm not good at any, you know. Just yeah. keep pushing. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, of all the things, you know, like you have all this, and then you still like. I mean, you invested on coaching. Why didn't you just invest on Garmin? What to you know, at least take care of what you got to take care of as a triathlete. Why coaching then first? Because I didn't know, I didn't know there was any rules to this or you do this first, you do that, or you need this or nothing. So I just, I needed some guidance. I didn't know, I didn't know I needed a garment. I didn't know I needed some shorts or clicks or nothing like that. So I would just, when I met you, that's what, whatever advice you give me, that's what I did. I just follow your advice. Gotcha. Um, the first Ironman, I was just going blind. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, you know, I was just trusting what you were giving me. That's yeah. what I did. Yeah. Just trusted. And then what really helped me is all that meant mental uh, training that we did too. The mental training at, uh, on the mountains by myself <laughs> that helped a lot. <laughs> yeah. You still remember that, even though it was like yeah. three. Ago. Yeah. No, four years ago. No, yeah, three years ago. Three years, three years. One, 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 one day uh, we were riding together in the mountains and it was tough. We did a long one. I don't know if you can remember. I, I was I trying to, I, I was I trying to race you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it. So, um, yeah. So one of the things that you've also improved, at least on the, on your, you did sign up for LA Marathon, which is two weeks prior to Cozumel. Yeah, I know that, I know that one that wasn't part of the plan. That was just uh, this year that we started training. Uh, the first year, I didn't do no marathons. I didn't do nothing like that. I was just training. And I think the most I did on 2018, if I remember, because I was working a lot, I was working 712s. Mm -hmm. I did 18 miles in the gym. That was my longest for the first year because I didn't have no time. So I remember talking to you, do whatever you can in the gym. So I will go work from six to six, then go to the gym and go back to the hotel like at 10 at night. You yeah. know, because that year I was like, I got to do everything I can to be able to finish. I got to finish. I'm not going to quit. I got to get it done. So I did more than this year. This yeah. year, I think I had a little bit more experience. So I was more relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you have you have two kids, you have your wife, you have a full time yes. job, and then you, I know you yes. have to drive far too. And during that time, on your first full Ironman, I remember during your peak training, you were using your a spin bike at the gym because you didn't have a trainer. Yeah. Or yeah. else because of work, it was very very busy. Yeah, it was a little bit different. Uh, the the LA marathon for this year. Uh, I saw that they were doing it because I think they didn't do it last year. Mm -hmm. So they did it in November. So I just, I, I remember asking you, hey, can I do this two weeks before the Ironman? Would that help me with my training? 
Yeah. And I think we talk about it, and, and yeah, and you said yes, so I went and did it. And before that, uh, that marathon, you had me doing a marathon by myself. <laughs> so I did a marathon like a week uh, before the LA marathon, and then the LA marathon, and then the Ironman. Yeah. Uh, it, it did. It did affect me a little bit with my cramps. I had, you know, I never had cramps before, but since I was running too much, I mm-hmm. started getting cramps. Mm-hmm. And your your advice was to massage, recover, do this. So the the week prior to the Ironman, that's all I did. Concentrate on my cough because I didn't want to get a cramp in, in the Ironman. Yeah, and it worked. It worked. The recovery worked. Um, I'm just gonna show this one very very quickly uh, as a review, everyone, because we do have the winning formula actually in our Ironman and Beyond, and this is what the what Mauricio is talking about. What he, what he has focused is actually training, but about one week to two weeks is all about body maintenance habit. Because what he did, what, what he just said is that he, would, he finished and actually beat his PR, full marathon PR, two weeks prior the Ironman Cozumel. Now we wanted to make sure that he doesn't get injured prior to uh, cause, uh, Cozumel. So what we were focusing on a lot on body maintenance habit. What is that? That is addressing the weak links fast recovery, and really making sure that he's not sick. Because during that time, I remember Mauricio asking me, Coach, how about if I burn out, you know, leading to that? But because there was a balance, did you burn out? Were you okay? No. Yeah, no. I, again, this is in my second Ironman. is weird. I wake up the next morning after my Ironman. I'm not sore. I wasn't <laughs> sore again. So that means that I still have something on me, you know, to, to keep going. I, I could have gone more, but this time was uh, the rain, the blisters and all that because of the water. It, it rained from four o'clock in the morning to the end of the night. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, wanted, yeah, I wanted to ask you, uh, Mauricio, because this uh, cost mill that you did was your second full Ironman. Right? Yes. You had a break. Uh, during the COVID year, and then now you sign up, you wanted to go back and, you know, see what your your base best time. And what I'm curious about is that you could have done it yourself again, because you know how to train. You you, you taught me how to train. So so I I could have just went back to my garment, had everything in there, I could have just followed it. Yeah, why, why did you come back? And say hello this, to uh, <laughs> this, you know, and, and the, the first Ironman, I made mistakes and I learned from those, right? Absolutely. I learned mistakes. So, so I want to do better. I learned mistakes with my nutrition. Uh, mm-hmm. Remember, you guys always say, don't change anything that they are your Ironman. Any little thing will, will affect you. And I did. I did change something. My, my nutrition... I was doing the sandwich with jelly and salt. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And when I was training, I would do the sandwich before I go training. This okay. time I did it the night before to save time. Okay. So the salt, the salt did something to the, to the jelly. Yeah. And, and it was bitter the next morning when I raced. Oh. So it did really affect my, I was eating it. It was nasty, but I was eating it. And then uh, another mistake that I made, big mistake, that I didn't stop to go to the restaurant. I stopped to pee because I wanted to save time. So I went like, after the swing, I went like three hours without stopping. Wow. And and did affect me. It did affect me really bad. I wasn't, when I got off the bike, I was in pain. I felt the urge to go to the restroom and I couldn't. It was just pain. Gotcha. So the whole, the whole marathon was like that. Every 10 minutes, every five minutes, I would feel like going to the restroom, but I, but I couldn't. You know, I couldn't. I was suffering. The whole I would tell my family, "Hey, I'm suffering." And I keep going. You're doing great. Keep going. Yeah. But I was suffering. Then I saw another uh, another athlete, and I told him, "Hey, my stomach's bad." He said, "Oh, I got diarrhea." So, oh. so, so I just kept going. You know, kept I going. didn't finish. Yeah, right. but I, I I learned from those mistakes, and I didn't do those mistakes on this one. I see. So so. <laughs> Is your why didn't you why did you not do it yourself on the second time because you already did it last year I mean the 2018 because you have uh, lots of friends now right on triathlon you could have just joined your friends do their workout follow whatever they're following get an online I, yeah I could have followed what you gave me uh, 
this time we were gonna prove that I was better, that, that yeah. I was gonna beat my time. I, I didn't I didn't win just to finish. I went to beat my time. And I needed your guidance. I, I really trust your training. I really believe in your training. So yes. uh just believing in you it makes me finish, you know. I, I follow your guide your guidance and that's that's why I went back. So let's I, check out uh the difference. He actually PR'd same course, and actually the second time around, either was a rain, um, 1530 to 1358. Nice. That was 2018? 2018. And PR'd. And actually right here, this one, two weeks prior, he did a full, iron, a full marathon, and he also did a personal record, which is... This one right here. Oh, no, not that one. Let's see. This was my new PR. Okay. And this was the full marathon two weeks prior Cozumel. And he was so happy. 422. I was, I was really happy because my wife and her first marathon, she did 421. Oh, <laughs> no. Because her, her first... Yeah, her first marathon ever, she did 421. Wow. So <clears throat> when I was doing the training, like a week or yeah. uh, two weeks prior to the LA Marathon, I did my PR that was 459. Gotcha. But that was in a, in, a, in a week that I was tired in training. Right, right. So, so the day of the LA Marathon, I was fresh and rested, and I felt good. This is my first marathon ever. I think I've done like seven, LA, yeah, like seven LA Marathons. This is the first one that I really can say I run the whole marathon, you know? Awesome. And one of the yeah. things that, uh, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to talk about this one is because uh, I know a lot of athletes actually are having a hard time with nutrition. For you on this one, you saw that in, the, in your full marathon. And let, now what I wanted to point out here, uh, let me just show you the difference of what a nutrition can make if you actually look into it and address it. And this is during the training of Mauricio. Uh, in our uh, in our exclusive group, basically what he posted here was that coach, this one, as you can see here, August 23, and he said, I DNF after 10 miles, <laughs> he used DNF. Everything starts shutting down, legs, stomach, and mind. These are yesterday's workout. I was trying to catch up today. So he didn't even finish because he was just slowing down. He was two o uh, two o four, finished, uh, and it was twelve thirty four, and he yeah he missed you know we want we want the half marathon, and mainly it's because of his nutrition because this one is August twenty three. After that, we did a lot of root uh, root cause analysis about his nutrition, and that's why there's a lot of feedback here of all the things where I'm looking at the nutrition label, and then now next day we did next week. We did it again, but that was August 23. This one is August 28. The difference was nutrition on that. And look at his time. From, from saying DNF, now he PR'd his half marathon on, on the training. He did sub two, two hours half marathon just because he tackled his nutrition, which is actually here we're in. We did... Uh, we did some spreadsheet and actually look into the details of every hour. Um, nice. How'd you feel about that? Having you, you know, on the full marathon that you actually felt like you are running and also that you're going oh, to help you big time. It, it is great. And then looking, looking back at that half marathon, um, it was not only that day, but the whole week I was eating good. I started mm -hmm. eating my all meal in the morning, my banana. Yeah. Yeah. It was the whole week. It wasn't just one day nutrition. It was it was a few days. Yep. I'm glad you pointed it out. Yeah. So Mauricio, what he did is not just the actual training or key simulation. It's uh it's the entire week wherein he clean up his eating. Yes, yes. So from that I learned that I could be faster if I do that. So I started that Stop eating my, my sweet sweet bread in the morning. So I, I changed it for all. Um, <laughs> I'm back to that now. I'm back to that now. So so the, the when I when we train for the marathon that I PR again on, on my training. 
yeah. uh, the same the same thing. You know, the the good breakfast, the light eating, and then uh, carbo loading. Sure. And that day, you know, the, the twenty ounce nutrition, all that. You know, try to be strict with that, and that would that will help a lot. Yep. Yeah. So everyone, so it's not just about training. It's not about just working harder. You know, think about those things that we actually uh, showed here earlier. Uh, let me just show it to you right now. So there is, we talked about body maintenance, making sure that you don't get injured. So that's part of it. And the next thing is nutrition strategy, because that would make a big difference. It's, this one is training here, physical training, focusing. Ooh, we're going to talk about technique next, technique, speed, endurance. And there's the nutrition here. So you don't want to be just working hard all the time. You want to take care of your, your, uh, those weak links. Okay. And the next thing is nutrition. Now, the next thing that I want to ask you, uh, Mauricio is that you're swimming. Yeah. I remember you said that you were really working on the technical aspect of swimming. You really wanted to improve that. Yes. Yes. Uh, the swimming, uh, this year, uh, felt like I understand them more. I remember the coaching and, you know, gliding, um, you know, um, the kicking. All, I remember all the technical stuff in the first Ironman in 2018, but I really knew what it meant. I just knew the world, world what it was. But now, I, I, this year, I felt like I understand it. And, and, and I will see myself training and gliding and all, feel the water and all that. And I would see my, my time improvement when I was training. So when yeah. I did the, the Ironman, I was, my goal was to try to swim around two minutes uh, for every 100 yards. That was my goal. And I didn't know if I would be a, able to accomplish, but it did. And of course, the current helped a lot, but sure. it still it feels, it feels like I did it, you know, even though there was some help from the current, but, well, uh, you know. Yeah, that's what, that's what everyone says, you know. Well, it's Cozumel, you know, but if you think about it, it and compare apples to apples, it's the same ocean. Could be, you know, oh, yeah. If you think about it, what's your, your swim time on that same place, Cozumel, in 2018, your time was 139.48. Okay. That's true. That's that, true. Same, same beautiful water, warm yeah, water. Same nice looking, you know, under the yeah, water, yeah, yeah. right? 110, and then you did 110, 13, one hour and 10 minutes, 13 seconds. How many? The 20, 30, almost 30 minutes PR. Yeah, I really felt really good. That was, that, was, that was like a big accomplishment when, I came, out of the yeah. when I came out of the water and looked at my watch. I was like, yeah, this is, this is good. Uh, yeah. One thing different from the first one was uh, my goggles. My goggles, the first Ironman, they mm. were always fogging up, always, gotcha. always. Gotcha. So, so this time, well, that time, I would have to stop every so many yards, take off my goggles, clean them, and go back again and start swimming again. So I stopped so many times ah, during the course. Could be that. This, yeah. this time, up. more more expensive goggles. They didn't, they didn't fog the whole time since I put them on because I put them on because it was raining. Right. So I put them on because of the rain. And since then, until I came out, I didn't fog. So when I was swimming, I was thinking of my gliding. You know, right. don't forget you a little bit of kicking. And then uh, what I was doing was I would go, of course, right? I would go like sideways and I would look and, oh, I'm, I'm going the wrong way. What I started doing, I would see somebody in front of me or a rock. And I will follow that rock or the, or the person in front of me. I will see him popping up, right? And I know he knows where we're going. So I will follow that guy because he already popped up. So I didn't have to do it. I had, other, I had other persons doing it for me. So I just <laughs> keep my head in the water. Gotcha. So that, 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 I did that astray and it helped a lot. Yeah. Awesome. So you learn those strategies and actually use it. Yes. Yeah. It looks like you, you really did use a lot in the technical part because I, I remember you. You did not like going to a cold open water swim and you tried to like, coach, can I actually just swim in the pool? I said like, yeah, but I really need to you to work on your technique there if you're going to swim in the pool. And then 
you still need to go to the open water, but it's okay right now. So I, I know where you're at in terms of the skills. I usually do not, you know, be, I won't be okay with that, but I know where uh, it's a lot of more like the coach and the athlete understanding where the athlete is coming from. And I know her, his skills in the open water would not be a problem, but I also know that if he focuses on the technique, he will gain a lot. Yeah, it just it's just weird. I don't know why I I, uh, I was so afraid of Bayshore. I'm not I'm not sure I, until now. I don't know why. It was just my mind telling me, oh, it's dark, it's cold, uh, something's gonna touch you, stuff like that. You know, I know it's safe. I know it's, there's no waves, but I don't know. In Cozumel, I just feel really different. I feel like it's my personal pool, and I yeah. go in and enjoy enjoy myself. So it's, it's just with your mind. Whatever your mind's telling you is what's going to stop you and make you go. So we this talked is about, what I find out. Yeah, we talk about nutrition and then the body maintenance. The next thing that you had just brought up right now is your mindset. Yeah, how did you handle the rain? Did you get flat tires in the rain? But what is it? Because you were faster on that, even with the rain. What, 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 yeah. what, what did you do? Tell us. You, you know, I was, I was listening to the audio book, uh, uh, and uh, see if you can remember the, the, the name, uh, The Art of Resilience or something like that. Yep. Uh, so since when we were going over there, my mind was already said, I can't control the weather because I would look at the weather uh, forecast. It was rain all week. So I'm not going to be able to control that. So forget about that. Don't even worry about the weather. You know, and uh, I remember when I did it the first time, it was hot and windy. That is terrible when it's hot and windy. <laughs> so this time, as you know, when I came out of the water, I got on my bike, I felt really fresh. The weather was so nice, you know, not, not hot. Mm -hmm. And it started pouring, it started raining, and I started screaming to everybody, hey, this is a blessing. You know, the rain is a blessing. You guys don't know, but it's a blessing. I would tell everybody, it, it, it's better that it's raining, I would tell everybody. And I would push, you know, and I would feel fresh. It was 60 miles. I actually did like around 60 miles or 56 miles in less than three hours. Nice. So, so that, was, that was two loops because I was feeling really good. And every time it rained, because it rained and then it stops and it rained, I would, I would say the same thing. Hey, you guys don't know, but it's a blessing. You know, this is, the, the God is helping us right now with this race. So push right now that you can because if, <laughs> if the sun comes out. If the sun comes out. You, you, well, you know, that's amazing. If the sun comes out, you're going to regret it. Right. And it did. It did came in, out in the last loop. And everybody was, you could see the long faces. And it was like everybody was suffering, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but I took advantage of the rain. Instead of thinking it was a bad thing, I think it, I thought it was good. And what, I wasn't afraid of the rain. I wasn't afraid of falling, except for that river that we crossed. But I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of really falling. So I was, you know, pushing. I, I knew I had to take advantage of the rain. Because it was cooling down everybody. Nice. I love the way you actually reframe your mindset about that, you know. And also, um, I know that your wife was also surprised of how calm you were the days but, prior to the race. What did you do? Like, share us what you do, because we want that kind. I know a, a lot of athletes that, who are actually watching this, uh, like, how do you psych your mind up with, like, okay, rain, and you'll be fine. Like, it is a blessing. And then your wife is, like, surprised. What is happening here? You have a race coming up. Come on. Why are you so relaxed? Tell, tell <laughs> us, share to us what you did. Well, I guess one thing is the experience of doing the first Ironman, right? The first Ironman, I, the, the week prior to the, because I like, I was, I was there a few days before the race. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to get out of the room. I wanted to be, don't, don't make any extra effort, you know, in my first <laughs> Ironman. Sure. You know, and, and this time, I, in back of my mind, I knew I could swim better. And I knew I learned how to cycle a little faster. Because one, one day I went with Alex. He, he taught me a few tricks of mm -hmm. how to get more speed. Sure. So I knew I could cycle better. I knew I could swim. And so I trusted myself. I really trusted myself. There's always a little doubt in your mind. You know, what if something happens? What if this? And my wife would tell me, hey, why are you so relaxed? Look at everybody's training. Everybody's cycling, running, sweating, and you're not doing anything. <laughs> and I used to tell her, well, I did everything I had to do. You know, I already did. What I had to do, I, I just run a marathon. What else do you want me to do? You know, 
I got I got to recuperate. I got to I got to recover so I can be ready. And my daughter we should tell, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. He's he's recovering for the race, you know. Let, let him let him let him relax. So that's that's what I did. And I think uh, somebody mentioned about flats. Mm-hmm. Getting any yeah. flats on the bike. You'll be surprised how many people get flats. You know, you see people coming out of the race because they couldn't fix their bike. And you keep seeing that through the whole race. And I don't know what it is. I never get a, I haven't got a flat. Lucky. Since I, since I, awesome. it's, since I did 2018, I think I'm ready. I'm, I got my stuff ready. And I think I know how to change a tire, but I never did. I don't know if I avoid the glass or something, but. I, I haven't experienced that in the race, so it's a blessing to not to get a flat. Because you can see the pros struggling and almost crying because they got a flat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, I, I lost track, but... Thank you for sharing uh, that. That's awesome. <laughs> Going back to... Uh, I'm curious. What do you think, out of all the things you mentioned, so you mentioned the technique, you mentioned working on your nutrition, you mentioned the mindset change that you had. What do you think made the biggest difference for you working together with coach this time around? Like the number one thing? I think the number one thing overall uh, with, with, with coach, well, the more, it's, 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 it's not just only one thing, because when you say number one thing, you think about other things that come with the, with the package, you know? <laughs> Discipline is very important, you know. And the only thing is, when we say discipline, you want to do it every day, but sometimes you can't. Life doesn't let you do it every day. Mm-hmm. So when you can't do it, don't stress. Maybe today you pick up, you know. Uh, uh, there were times when I was training that I was feeling like I'm tired. I, don't, I can't get up. And I used to tell my coach, uh, how am I do that if I, I'm really tired? And they used to tell me, well, you'll be surprised what you can do. So, the mind, mindset is very important to me. Mindset uh, is, is everything because it's what's going to, when you're suffering and when you're in pain and when you're going through the stuff, the mind is, the, is what's going to make you keep going. And you got to have a goal. If it is your dream and it's your goal, you can do it. Anything you want to do in life, but if it's your dream and it's your goal, you can do it. If it's just something that you want to be because somebody else did it, it may not happen. You know, it has to be something that you really want to do in your life. I think that's what helped me. And, and what I got from, from uh, coaching with Tangrilla is the, the mindset and the discipline that, that it comes with it. I, I remember you used to say something like, uh, don't expect results if you don't do the work. You have to do the work to be yep. able to get a good result, right? Yep, you have to put the work. Yeah. And it's, it wasn't perfect even on the training because you got sick. There was a time when you got sick, mm-hmm. right? We worked. Yeah, I think I, I think I got sick because I took a little vacation. <laughs> I, I, you got too I much over- vacation. That's what yeah, happened. Yeah, I, I overdid it on the weekend and uh, my vacation. I didn't sleep good. I didn't eat good. And uh, when ah. I came back from from that weekend, I I, I had the cold. So, and I remember telling you, coach, is it okay to, to train with the cold? And you told me, no, you got to recover because something big was coming up already. Yeah. So, yeah, the recovery, that's another thing I learned this, this, this time. Recovery is as important as, as training. Love it. Thank you, Mauricio, for saying that. Yes. So, it's not just me telling people, yes, you got to <laughs> recover. It's part of the training. Yeah, it's, it's just the same. It's just important because if, if yeah. you just train, you burn out and you can't walk somewhere. You know, you recover, you get stronger, and then you come back stronger. Yeah. 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 Good Love stuff. It. Love it. All right. Awesome. Well, from Feisty Fox Coaching, Mauricio, we are so proud of you. I know you finished already two Ironman and you even beat your PR in one and a half hour plus your full marathon. But I know it's only a start. There's so much growth ahead, Mauricio. I'm not sure what's next. Would that be LA Marathon and actually beat your wife's time? If I do that, then she's going to try to beat me again and it will never end. You know, it will never end. She's very competitive. She, she, she pushed me to the last loop of the Ironman. She was, I'm going next to you. You got you to push harder. I'm going to pull you. And she, will, she, will, she was in front of me pushing me. 
<laughs> she no, was, come on. She was making you work during the race week, even after you already run a full <laughs> so, you know, Yeah, yes. Yeah. She's tough. <laughs> yeah, she's very tough. She's very tough. So it, it will be hard to compete. We will, we will never finish. You know, if, if I beat her, then she will try to beat me and then we'll go back and forth, you know? Yeah. Uh, she's, ha she's happy that I didn't beat her, so she's relaxed. She does, she's uh, not worried about it. Well, I do hope she listened to this when I watch this a replay of this one. She'll be laughing. <laughs> for, for every one of you guys who's watch this, I hope you find inspiration and learn a lot from that. We did talk about several things that uh, Mauricio had done. One of the things is the mindset and actually going right after your goal, no matter what that is, and not waiting for it, the nutrition, the body maintenance, uh, so you don't get injured, you don't burn out, listening to your body, recovery, especially when you get sick. Okay, there were so many things, and that's what we do here in Feisty Fox Coaching. We, we help busy high achievers just like Mauricio to achieve their big goals no matter what their experience is. Now, even though like Mauricio, he came from zero. He's a motorcycle. He's good at that one. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have Garmin. He didn't have wetsuit. You didn't even know. I don't know if you knew actually how to clip on clip then. You know, he didn't no, have cycling shoes. No, no when, when I got my bike, uh, I think I got some type of shoes. Something you don't remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so moving forward, he, he, he is doing it. He even do the double century ride even before he finishes full Ironman. That's what we do. It's not just the Ironman is great. We're going to do our best, but it's not just the Ironman. It's more about being disciplined, learning those skills, and being able to actually do repeat that, whatever you learn, Mauricio. So here in uh, Feisty Fox Coaching, we teach. Not, we don't just give you just the training. Because that's not going to get you any, well, it will get you. You might not enjoy the experience and want you to finish it like you actually did really well. So what that means is that we teach you the training, nutrition, body maintenance, mental fitness, and race strategy. Okay. So during training, we teach you all the step, step by step. Okay. And it's not just about what. We tell you why. Because our athletes are just like, Coach, you tell me what to do. Why do you want me to do this one? I want to know. <laughs> why do I need to do the drills? I know, yeah. You know, why do I need to go to the open water? And then there's the balance, you know, listening the athlete and then seeing where the athlete is coming from. And then basically, we both want the result, okay? So it's more of the listening what the athlete wants and how do we get there, even if they're busy. Going after the big goals, Okay. So what we want to tell you is that you can get the same help as Mauricio had. And if you want even just, you know, like how to prioritize or what's next for you, or maybe you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be like Mauricio. I know I just want to finish a, a sprint triathlon. And how about that? What is, if there's anything that's holding you back, or like, for example, you want to uh, win your age group, if there's anything that you want to prioritize, wherein we, I can help you out during the call, which is only 15 minutes call. Okay, let me just show you. Of where, like for example here, which one are you lacking of or which one do you need help on? And how can we actually con help you to continue on getting to your goal? If you want that call, we give that for free. It's a, just put hashtag game plan below Hashtag game plan. We don't sell any coaching there. We're here to help you, just like how Mauricio is helping here, just inspiring you and helping you. Just, we just want you to just put another step, just a baby step, and not get stuck. Because how did you feel about waiting four years, Mauricio? That's a long time, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I didn't, it was a dream. I really, it really was a dream. I didn't know if I would ever accomplish it. It would just... I'd say one day before I die, I want to do this, but I didn't know if it was going to happen or not. Uh, you know, my wife, like I tell you the way she is, she said, you got to do it now or you're not going to do it. So we went for it. And the goal was the Ironman. It wasn't the half Ironman. It wasn't the spring. It wasn't just went nothing like goal. that. It, it was the goal is that. Yeah, the that's, that's, the, that's the goal. Yeah. Whatever it takes to get there. If, if I needed to do a double century to get there, we did. We did it. We did it. A marathon, we did it, but the the goal was very defined. The 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 end, the, the finish line was there. 
There was no going. This way was just one way. That's why we so, went. I didn't know that was rules that I had to do a half before I full. No, I'm know? glad you did it. No <laughs> those. I'm glad no yeah. no one told you though. You just so like it, sometimes it's great to have to know so much, but it's also good when you don't know much. And because what yeah. you did, okay, full Iron Man. I'm gonna go after that. My that is my prize, right? Yes. And what, and what happened on that call, that, the first call that we had, that got you moving to the right direction? The first call what I got with you? Yeah. Uh, it, well, if I can remember it correctly, but I'm not sure what you're uh, looking for. But uh, I remember what I just remember from that call is like, you asked me what, what was the reason why I wanted to do this. Yep. And I shared, I shared to you it was, it was something meaningful in my life. I needed to do something positive, something that would make me feel accomplished, something that would, it was hard. Not like just anybody can wake up and go do an Ironman the next day. <laughs> something that it was going to cost me a lot, you know. I, I learned from this guy that was disabled on the street. He mm -hmm. was carrying a, a, a bucket of candy and chips, selling it, but he was disabled. He, he could hardly stand. He was carrying it for hours. He has his wheelchair next to him. So how come you don't sit down and carry, carry it with you in the wheelchair? Say, if I do that, it's easy. I got to make it hard for me so it can be worth it. So that's, 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 that's I learned from those kind of persons, you know? That's very nice. And, and, and I want to do something like that, something that was meaningful for me. It may not be meaningful for, for somebody like, like Scott that he can do it in 11 hours, <laughs> you know, but... <laughs> For me, it's very meaningful because it cost me a lot to do it. Because a lot of discipline, yeah. a lot of time away from my family, a lot of, you know, every day in my mind, oh, I have to go train today. You know, a lot of that. So that's why it's, it's something great for me to do something like that. Do you feel like you've achieved your dream? Yes, yes. I, 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 I did it the first time, but so nobody say I didn't do it. I went back and did it again. To make sure yeah. I done it, you know. <laughs> awesome. So now, now it's for sure I did it. You know, for sure I did my dream. Now, right now, I don't have another one. My my, my wife's talking about an old Ironman. Uh, that's <laughs> not my dream. I thought that's not my dream. My dream was the Ironman, you know. But yeah. you know, who knows? Who knows? You know, you time goes by and you change your mentality and you want to do something else. I I don't know. You know, right now I'm satisfied today. Maybe tomorrow I wake up and I want to do something else. We don't know. Love it. Thanks, Mauricio. So everyone, are you like Mauricio? You just heard him say that he wants an Iron Man. I'm going to go after it. And he has a defined goal. He has a defined dream. And that call actually helped him to actually move forward closer. So if you're one of those who just want to get your dream right now, where in your learning, the training, nutrition, body maintenance so you don't get hurt, you don't get sick, you don't feel burnout, the race strategy and mental fitness, go ahead and put hashtag game plan so our team members can actually contact you and book a call for just 15 minutes and I can, me and Vinetta can help you up. And basically, that's all we have for today. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you for sharing. And like I said to you, Mauricio, remember how you were back then when you want to achieve that Iron Man. Now you are the one who's helping others, just speaking up your story. I hope, I hope uh, whoever is listening or, I don't know, here's uh, Changuila name, you guys make that call because that call, uh, by doing that, is the first step on your finish line. You know, make that call and you wouldn't regret it. Just, just trust. If you trust and you have faith, you, you can do it. You can, anybody can do it if they really want it. Yeah. But that call, I remember what you're talking about now. That call is it, what everything started. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that call is free, right? If I'm correct. The, yeah, it's free. And you yeah, can't, yeah. also, you can't buy anything on it either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, so coaching that, not, the coaching is not really for everyone. We actually have to talk, to talk more to make sure that we can help you. But it's more, yeah. really, you know, just to give tips for everyone to get you to the right direction so you don't feel overwhelmed. Because it's, you know, when you're new, it's just like everything's like, okay, I'm going to buy a bike. I'm going to buy a Garmin. Okay, how about signing up? Which race? There's so much. Oh, what is Sprint Olympic? Ah! 
right? Yeah, it, it, so, and even though you fi you finish an Ironman, it's never perfect. I'm, my, my nutrition, I don't think it's 100%. If I could do my nutrition 100%, I could cut off another hour, you know? So there's there's yeah. always learning. There's yeah. always learning. You know, right. it's never going to be perfect. Never, you know? There's always more to learn. Good stuff, Mauricio. You, you just bring a lot of wisdom. Thank you so much, Mauricio. So for everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Put hashtag value. Let's thank Mauricio for his time. He's a very busy family man, full-time work, but he's here with us. Thank you, Mauricio. Till next thank time, you. everyone. And next week, Wednesday at 5.30, we're going to have another live training. See you guys. Bye. Thank you.